Hey there, I'm your kettlebell coach, Emma, and welcome to my page. Today, I'm going to share with you three different kettlebell cleans and how you might wanna use them. But before we get going, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my page for all future updates. So today we're going to cover the single arm dead clean, the single arm hang clean, and the single arm swing clean. I'll explain why they're all different, and then I'll show you when you might wanna use each of them. So grab a bell and let's go. A kettlebell clean is when we take the bell from the floor to a racked position using a hip hinge. That was a dead clean. There's also a hang clean and a swing clean. I'm gonna break down all three of those for you right now and then let you know when you should use them. So the first kind of clean is the dead clean. That's where the kettlebell goes from being on the floor, either lined up with your heels or slightly behind the heels, but it's starting from underneath you. For all cleaning exercises, we wanna start with our proper hinge positions. So take a big exhale, turn the core on by pushing the ribs towards the hip bones, tailbone towards the floor, core is engaged, nice and tall, and then hinge. From here, you've gotta grab onto your bell. And before you do anything, you wanna gently tug on the bell and squeeze that armpit, packing your lat by slightly externally rotating the shoulder, pressing your feet into the floor, inhaling, and then on the exhale, you twirl the bell up, pulling your elbow back and using the glutes and the starting strength that you had just created there to pull the bell up. So again, we put it back down, lined up with the heels or just slightly behind the heels. Core is on, hips go back, grab onto that bell, pull on it as you press into the floor, sealing up the armpit to pack your lat. And then as you stand up, you wanna pull your elbow back and swirl the kettlebell around your wrist. This is a way of cleaning up the bell that kind of takes it up the path of least resistance. The bell goes from sitting on the floor upright to almost the same upright position in my arm. In the rack, I have a nice straight wrist. My elbows are pointing downward. My shoulder is down. I'm maintaining that lat pack and staying upright. I'm not curling over with the bell. I'm not hyperextending the lower back. I'm nice and upright and make sure you're not uh, flaring your elbow out, letting your wrist fall back, or using your shoulder to push the bell away from your body. You really want it nice firm and firmly there. So one, I'll show you one more time here. I'm gonna switch sides, what it looks like from the front. Again, you can start with the bell lined up with your heels or farther back. Farther back's a slightly more advanced version. So I'm gonna just gonna line it up with my heels here. Pull on the bell, seal, my armpit closed and pull the lat, pull the shoulder back, packing the lat. Push into the floor. Really feel the back side of the body. Wake up here, hips are going back. And it just flies on up. As your hips come forward, the bell rises. So we tend to use a dead clean as a way of just cleaning the bell to go into anything where you need the kettlebell racked. It's a great way of getting the bell up to do a front squat, a chest press, a overhead press, a windmill, basically any time we wanna end up with that bell racked. You wouldn't necessarily do consecutive dead cleans as part of your workout, unless the point was to focus on that technique and the starting strength. You can use it, but if you wanted to program cleans into a workout continuously, like and go into another one, you'd probably go down into a hang clean or a swing clean if you wanted to get that cardio effect from cleaning. So it's really, I would say, the most practical and efficient way of getting a weight up to then press, squat, something like that. If you want the kettlebell in a racked position or even just to hold it, dead clean it. You can also dead clean two bells. That's a little more challenging. Sometimes it's a little easier if you have two bells to swing clean them, but we'll get into that more in a second. So from the dead clean, let's talk about the hang clean. Hang cleaning is when the kettlebell starts in a hanging position. 
and you have to use your ankles as well here because you don't have as much starting strength. So you hang the bell, you shoot your hips back, you pack the lat on this side, inhale, and when you exhale, you need a little more momentum. So you can get some triple extension on your ankles, knees, and hips by straightening out the ankles, pressing through the toes, lifting the heels in, a, in an explosive manner. So here again, I'll do a few, starting in the rack, If the bell's not that heavy, you're not gonna get that much triple extension. Your heels aren't gonna lift very much. But even if they don't lift, you're gonna start to feel them separate from the floor. And that's okay. It's kind of like the same force we generate for a push press or a jerk. So here, what you can see from the side what this looks like. I'm gonna switch arms, starting from our hanging position. Back down to the hang. So when you might want to use a hang clean, a few different situations. One, say you're doing something with a light bell, like you wanted to warm up for your workout with some windmills. Um, I'm holding just an eight kilogram here. Hang clean it up, then it goes up in the air. It's a really quick way of flipping the bell up onto your wrist. As a coach who's constantly demoing, I hang clean a lot. So you can always hang clean if the weight is really light and you don't need to reach as far down. You don't need as much starting strength. But then if you wanna do continuous cleans for a cardio workout, you can do a hang clean. It's also a great exercise to do to prepare you for other explosive work. So I like doing hang cleans as movement prep on a push press day or on a day when we're gonna do jump squats. It's just good for preparing the body for triple extension, which is when ankles, knees, and hips are all in extension. That's what triple extension means. It doesn't actually mean the arms in this case. So anything, if we wanted to jump, right, it practices that triple extension. If you wanted to push press, push pressing like this, right? It starts to prep the body for that. And yeah, that's pretty much when you might want to use the hang clean. If you're using a really heavy weight, hang cleaning is going to become a really big challenge because you don't have as much starting strength. When I say starting strength, I want you to think of if you had a bow and arrow. The farther you pull the bow back, the farther the arrow goes. So if my hips are the bow and the kettlebell is the arrow, in the dead clean, I have a lot of hip hinge here. <laughs> the bell flies up. My legs do all that work. If I start from a hang clean position, my hips can't do as much work. They're not reaching as far back as they were down here. Now they're not as loaded. And now something else needs to come into play. My arm's gonna have to work harder, but so are my ankles to get that bell up. So less starting strength, therefore the heavier you go, the harder that's going to be. So the final clean is the swing clean. Now that's the one that people are often most familiar with. You start it like you would a single arm swing, but instead of projecting the bell, you clean the bell. So here's what it looks like. So we hike the bell here. We hike it as it goes up and we hike it as it goes down. I love swing cleans for continuous swings. If you want to do heavy continuous swings while getting the cardio benefits, a swing clean gets you that big hip hinge at the bottom, a lot of starting strength between reps to go up and clean the bell. It's also a great way if you have double bells to get, again, the most starting strength you can out of a double, out of um, your clean. And I'm going to show a few here. We start the same way we do for that single arm swing. So square off your shoulders, pull the arm bone into the socket, pack that lat, put your arm in your, your hand in your armpit. Try to squeeze the arm. You'll feel your lats, those muscles right here start to fire. Inhale, hike, exhale up. And when I hike 
and pull the bell up, I mimic it with my non-working hand. So here we'll go again. Square everything off, pull on the bell, press in the floor, feel the back side of the body wake up, hike, and clean. And the non-working arm mimics this. Another reason I like the swing clean, if you were at a heavy weight or double bells, is with the swing clean, you can take more of a sumo stance, a wider stance, and it leaves more room for heavy weight. Whereas when you do a dead clean, we tend to have the feet a little narrower. There's just not as much room, and sometimes the bells will collide with your knees. Of course, you could go wider in that starting position for a dead clean, but you can try it with me. It's a little weird to have your feet pointing out as you're reaching behind you like that. It's a lot more natural if you're reaching forward. So those heavy, bigger bells, swing clean is gonna be your friend. The thing you wanna be extra careful with with the swing clean is that you don't end up doing that, smacking your wrist. It's most likely to happen in the swing clean. So what you've got to do when you do your swing clean, I'm going to mime it here with no weight. You hike and as you stand up, that arm stays connected as possible to your body. Just like with the dead clean where your arm went like this, now we've got to get to the body first before we stand up and clean up the bell. And for some reason that can be a little more challenging. And sometimes we stand up before the arm has gotten close to us and we end up with that thump. So here what we want to do, keep that arm as close to the body as possible and you can think of pulling the elbow really far back behind your body as you stand up. In practice it might not actually get that far back but you want to go for it. And again, these swing cleans are great for doing continuous reps. So that can look like this. And when you do this, you can see on the last one, I just did it. You wanna make sure that you really push the bell between the legs. So first you let the bell start to fall. And then once it does, push it between the legs really far. I don't lead with the legs here. I lead with the bell and the arm. What you don't want to do is throw it away from you like that. You really want to let the bells fall and then push them between the legs before you come back up. On swings and cleans, your legs lead as the bell's coming up. The hips lead. But then you want to get some air time, whether it's at the top of the swing or holding in the rack before you let the arms go and you chase the bells as you push them between your legs. Or you let the bell come down and you chase it as it flies between the legs. So either way, you wanna make sure that you let that bell lead coming down and you don't throw it away from you. And with all the cleans, we let the bell come down the front of the body. Here with the swing clean, we let it come down the front of the body. Here with the dead clean. And here with the hang clean. When it comes down, you're just letting it unwind and letting the bell do the work until the very end when you absorb the force with that hip hinge. One other thing that's important to note about cleaning the bell is that you make sure you keep the core engaged no matter which version you pick. You want to feel the core brace. You want to feel really strong, like you're going to do a deadlift or a swing. Don't be lazy with it, just because maybe you're only doing it for one rep. So make sure, no matter which version you pick, you keep that core on. I hope this was helpful in explaining the difference between the dead clean, the hang clean, and the swing clean, and that as you go on with your workouts, you feel better equipped to make the right decision for you. If you found this video really helpful, make sure to check out emmabfit.com power. It's my newest group program. We start on March 7th and you get 12 weeks of advanced or intermediate to advanced programming. And it's going to be a ton of fun. It's for women and men, anyone who wants to be involved, four on-demand workouts a week, 
one group, group workout a week live, one yoga class a week live, and a group community and unlimited form checks from me so you can make sure you're doing everything correctly. You show me a video, I give you your feedback, and it's great. The program's filling up, so make sure you don't miss out. I'mthebefit.com power. I can't wait to see you there.